everybody's about to be like, oh, she ain't loyal. Oh, she switching networks. Oh, this, oh, that. Royalty. Yeah, royalty, royalty, royalty. Hey Royals, welcome back to my kingdom. So today I have a new video for you. And no, this is not a Netflix review. This is on Hulu. I was contemplating watching this series. I just didn't really think that. I don't know, I was just like, not really interested in watching the series. And then I saw the trailer, so I gave it a shot and I am in complete awe. Like, I'm, I'm just, I wasn't ready for this. So today I watched The Handmaid's Tale and yes, I watched all 10 episodes today. Like from 12 o'clock this morning, no 12 o'clock in the afternoon to a finish like about 10 o'clock. Like I couldn't stop. So I'm just going to run through like the episodes. Uh, basically just a general recap of what happened season Episode one. Episode one is called Of Fred. So it introduces the main character, June. And this starts out showing how the world has already changed. We see June, her husband Luke, and her daughter Hannah are all in this car and they're running from this militia group who are chasing them. And when the car ends up crashing, um, Luke stays behind to basically try to fight off the militia. And we just see June and her daughter Hannah running from the gunshots and trying to hide from these men. At this point we don't understand why they're hiding, but we hear gunshots so we figure that Luke is dead. And then it starts to fast forward into what is supposed to be present day, which is June wearing all red and she's basically what is known now as the Handmaids. So there are several different groups for um, the society, the new totalitarian society. So there's five different um, there are several different status in the world now. So there will be the handmaids whose job is only to be fertile. You have the aunts who are supposed to keep the handmaids in line and teach them what to do. You have obviously the wives. So in this case, Serena Joy, her, her she's the commander's wife. And you have the commander who is basically like the government officials who are in charge of keeping the society running afloat. You have the Marthas who are um, like in-house chefs and like um, maids and everything they keep everything tidy in the homes the eyes or the watchers who are there to basically spy on the handmaids and make sure nobody is conspiring against the government because they don't they didn't work so hard to like you know destroy it, the whole place to have it back to how it was okay. so episode continue episode one you see that June isn't um, although her rights are taken away she isn't she hasn't changed who she is as a person. Like she's still trying to keep that thought afloat of keeping her personality and her mentality to how she was before everything changed for her daughter because her daughter has now been taken away from her and she's just trying to make sure that she stays afloat until she gets to see her daughter again. See now that her name is in June is of Fred because of Fred meaning as I said before that the women are property. So Fred is the commander who is the head of the household, the husband, and now she's his property. Then we see the rituals that happened. And oh my goodness, so it's a thing called the ceremony, which is um, basically the handmaids have to lay between the wife's legs while she's being held down. And basically the commander comes in and basically rapes her because she's fertile and he needs the air. And I'm just looking at this like, this is insane. I never knew this book existed. And I was sitting there watching that, that in awe because I'm just like, this is some freaky shit. Episode two, birthday. We see how the women were chosen and it's because the world had a decline in fertility. So the women have been gathered and we see um, certain characters being introduced. A woman named Janine. And as the women are gathered before everything happened and they're being introduced to what they're going to now live their lives out doing, Janine looks at the videos and she's just like, okay, this is some crazy stuff. I'm not doing this. Get out of my face with this. And the aunts found that to be disrespectful. So what they did, they plucked their eye out because they said, if my right eye offends thee, pluck it out. So they took her eye. And then she ended up going to the loony bin after that because um, she ended up going crazy. But that would destroy somebody. And then fast forward, 
Janine is now pregnant in the present in present time and um, she is of Warren. So Warren is another commander who she is a handmaid for and she's given birth and then she starts to kind of go a little crazy because obviously she just had a baby and she doesn't want to just give it up to whoever so you see her trying to um, process all that but because she's been traumatized with so much she's not really having it so three late so in this episode June's friend of Glenn because okay so all the handmaidens have to when they go out to like go shopping or walk the streets or anything like that they have to go out with a partner so of Glenn which was another handmaid she and um, June were both walking and she figured out kind of that of Glenn was a spy or she was conspiring with the rebels as June is going on another walk she realizes that her partner has changed and of Glenn has been taken so now that's kind of like alerting her and then June remembers that of Glenn had told her not to trust anyone because an eye was watching her you see that June's commander has more than just a professional handmade in relationship with her he invites her to our office and they're not supposed to be alone together because that's one of the rules he ends up playing scrabble with her and at this point all the women in this society aren't supposed to read they aren't supposed to write uh, all the books have been destroyed magazines everything education for women is non-existent so really all their rights have just been stripped away then it comes up to the eye or the government comes to their house comes to june's household and are basically questioning her because they want to know if she knew that of glenn was gay and that's another rule that's not supposed to happen so gay is like out the window and that is one of the rules that you can't be i think it was like you can't be gay some doctors were killed um priests teachers anything like that that was that was a no that was a no so she got captured and her and her wife were put on trial martha her wife was martha and martha got hung and they ended up the aunts ended up doing surgery on up glenn you won't have any more temptations because it's not gonna be pleasurable pleasurable for you so they took out um her pleasure spots and i don't know it just i was just so shook i was like oh my gosh these people are insane yeah but they kept her alive they kept of glenn alive because because she's still fertile and they still need the woman to you know produce so because we're cows basically so for is this italian title i'm sorry i just um yeah i i i'm I'm gonna butcher that. This one focuses on Mora and June and training to be handmaids. And this is like back in the past. Like it flashes back and forth from past to present. So when I say past, just know what I mean. So this is like the past, and they end up jumping one of the aunts, stealing her clothes so that they can try and find a train to go to Boston. Because at this point, Canada is one of the um, refugee spots for the Americans when Canada is now called Little America in this time so they end up being really confused because everything is like taken off like street signs any type of signs railroad tracks signs everything is um, taken off so no so like nobody can escape because Mora was the one in the aunt uniform she wasn't being questioned but June was because she was still in her handmaid's uniform so some of the soldiers end up taking June and when the train came Mora just hopped on and I was like, damn, June was just left behind. Now in the present, the mistress, who is the wife, Mrs. Waterford, she is very upset that June hasn't had, um, like, you know, that she's not pregnant yet. And um, so she locks June in her room and tells her, you know, you better not come out. So June has been in her room for like two, three days, and she's like basically going crazy so she fainted and one of the Marthas came in and was basically like screaming because she thought June had killed herself and um June acts sick so she wants to go to the doctor they send her to the doctor and at this point the doctor his little sneaky ugly self was basically like oh I can help you if you need it you know because he's trying to like get some on the side like he's really being nasty so June was like no it's too dangerous but he was like oh you know 
Mr. Um, he was like, oh, Fred may be sterile. Most of these old guys are. And sterile isn't a word that's supposed to be used. Sterile is a word that is forbidden. So she was just like, nah, boo, like, I'm not doing that. At this point, it's ceremony night. So the commander couldn't perform at the ceremony. And he was really embarrassed. So then the commander ends up inviting June to his office again to play another game of Scrabble because Scrabble is so interesting. Um, at this time, when June was in her, remember when June was in her closet because she was sick? She has saw writing, which is the name of this episode, she has saw the writing in the closet floor. So she sees a Latin book when she has to go grab a dictionary because he didn't believe that she like won or something like that. So she asked him if he spoke Latin. He was like, yeah, I spoke a little, you know, had to learn to pass my SATs. She asked him to translate it, and he basically says it means don't let the bastards get you down. So June starts smiling because she's like, oh, the girl before, like, you know, she was, she's telling me to stay strong, yada, yada. So the commander kind of gets shooketh because he's like, wait, did you know the girl that was here before? And June's like, oh, so what happened? And he's like, she killed herself. She hung herself by on the ceiling fan. And June's like, oh, so how she, like, you know, thinking like, dang, so she couldn't really take it. She ended up killing herself. Which honestly, that probably would have happened to me. I would not be living in this world. This is too much. Too much. He says it's because she found her life unbearable. Which anybody would find that life unbearable. Episode 5, Faithful. So. So in Faithful, June is trying to figure out if Nick is into her. Now, I know I didn't mention this character, Nick, but Nick is one of the drivers, and he's who off of Glenn had warned June about because she thought that he was an I. So she's trying to figure out if Nick likes her or not, and Mrs. Waterford basically says, you know, June's time is running out there because at this point she's been there for like two years or so, and she still hasn't had a baby. So she basically, so Mrs. Waterford basically tells Nick if he wouldn't mind having sex with June so that she can get pregnant. And at this point, June is just like, are you serious? Like, the guy that I like has to basically do this, like, it's nasty. Because at this point, Mrs. Waterford thinks that the same thing that the doctor thought that is the commander that that can't produce a child and then it flashes back to the past so we see how June met her husband Luke and Luke is a very sweet guy but at the time he was married hmm and then now back to the present there is another ceremony happening so mind you earlier in the day Nick and June already performed the ceremony and now it's going back to later on that night where the ceremony has happened again, but with Fred. So now, um, at this point, he's kind of, Fred has kind of gained a connection with June. And um, because of the Scrabble meetings, the secret meetings and stuff, and um, this time he starts really going in on the ceremony, like he was like touching her and stuff, and he's not supposed to do that. So June's basically like, ran to him afterwards and was like, don't ever do that, and your wife is in the room, and all this other stuff, and he's like, well, you didn't mind and I'm just like this dirty old bastard he's a dirty old bastard he got some nerve I just could not so the next day wash off with of Glenn we figure out that her real name is Emily so now we have a name to the face and she tells June to watch out for May Day and May Day is basically when um, it's basically like the rebels because they're planning to revolt and get out of that society and at this point, they're all like at this farmer's market type place. And Emily hops into one of the security cards, basically runs over one of the security guards, and she gets taken away after that because obviously she killed somebody. So, six, a woman's place. June and Nick have already bonded at this point, and they've already made a connection and already slept together, and they're basically like having their own little romantic thing going on. At this point, some gov government officials from Mexico are coming in, they're like foreigners visiting, and they're trying to see how the handmaids are functioning in this society. So they wanna see if the society is actually functioning to all it's supposed to be. And June overhears them trying to 
like they're talking about trade so the other uh, government officials the Galilee and Mexico are talking they're like yeah we're trading oranges and what's interesting is one of the women government official from Mexico she asks Mrs. Waterford if this society is all that she hyped to be because we find out Mrs. Waterford used to be a writer and she actually published a novel and it was it was actually very successful and so she says well how do you feel that um, nobody no woman will ever be able to read your book again and or even know about it because women aren't allowed to read remember that so she goes oh well you know it's all for the greater good or some bull like that and I'm just looking at that like girl you know you mad because you have no say in anything that happens now your husband has excluded you from every single thing and you just have to sit over there salty okay so a fast forward to them all the handmaidens in the town are gathered to um, this huge gala this dinner and Mrs. Waterford tells Aunt Lydia who is in control of all the aunts she tells her okay remove the damaged ones which is like the ones who have been have whose hands got cut off whose eyes are plucked out who have been who don't look i guess presentable the maids all gather into this nice hall it's like really pretty the other the out the foreigners who are visiting um government officials are looking at them like in awe like oh wow they're so majestic it's so crazy and um basically mrs waterford introduces everything that's happening she's like through all the trauma and lives lost this is what we're trying to reduce so she introduces the children who the handmaids have given birth to and they all and all the children come inside the gala and are like running around being um being kids enjoying life they don't know what's going on but then you just see the handmaids and all their faces are just like broken one of the handmaids starts speaking to june and they're like and she asks her well do you know what um, the commander and the mexican official were talking about and june's like i don't know they were talking about trading oranges something like that and the girl goes well now june sees well the handmaids about to really be m real cattle like they're about to travel across different countries to give birth to a society now after the gala june it's like the next day and a mexican official um woman she comes and talks to june and she just like oh you know i want to just thank you for all the work you're doing and she gives her some mexican chocolate and june's looking at that like are you serious so she comes clean about everything because she's just had enough and june's just like you know they rape us they beat us i didn't choose this I try to run but they captured me at the border you know they took my daughter so she's like going off about everything that the handmaids experienced and the Mexican official she's just looking at her looking at June like you know um, I'm sorry that happened to you but I can't help you and June's looking like shook she's just like what are you talking about you can't help us and she's like well in my country there hasn't been a child born in like six years and there's been a decline and my country is dying and without y'all help um my country will be no more so she's basically telling june like we need y'all to do what y'all made to do and then june just sees like it's no hope but as they leave the other official who's with the mexican woman she comes he comes to june and he's like oh i can help you is this your husband and he says luke's name and june is basically like shit because she thought luke died when she heard those gunshots and he's basically like we'll write a letter and i'll try to get it to him so now june is like seeing a little hope in her face because she's thinking like oh you know my husband's alive but she um but it has been like three years since she's seen him so it's kind of like hard for her to process it episode seven the other side or the accident happened when him june and hannah were in the car together it shows how they were trying to escape out the city so they had to basically sit in the um they was trusting june's um friend of her mother's so i think her mother was like a doctor or something and helped save this man's life so he was trying to you know pay back um the favor they end up having to hide in the trunk of his car and they still ended up getting captured because then they find out that the guy that helped them got killed so now we're back to the very beginning and we're seeing well not the very beginning we're seeing the part about the accident when um 
June, her daughter, and Luke were trying to escape on the road. You already know what happened with June and Hannah. They already got taken. But Luke did get shot, but he didn't die. Now, he got shot by one of the soldiers and ended up in an ambulance. And then the ambulance ended up getting in a car crash. And they get went off the road and flipped. So Luke was able to escape, but um, he was really badly wounded. And some rebels ended up finding him. So this episode is really long, but it really just focuses on Luke. It. Episode 8, Jezebel. I would say Jezebel is probably my favorite episode. <laughs> At this point, Mrs. Waterford, she ends up like going somewhere. She takes a trip somewhere. I think she went to go visit one of the other wives. And the commander ends up showing up in June's room and he's never supposed to be in there. So he basically like presents her with a gift and he's like, oh, I'm going to take you out tonight. So they're about to have like a little date night or whatever. He ends up like getting her all dolled up. He shaves her legs just because they don't let the handmaids use razors because they think they're going to kill themselves. So he has to shave her legs for her and then he gives her makeup. So she puts on makeup and he gives her like a really nice like disco bedazzled dress and some heels and they end up going to this place called Jezebel's so Jezebel's is like a brothel and she goes oh well, who are these women or whatever he said well you know they used to be lawyers doctors or um, some professor and he says yeah so you might find a good conversation here so during the process of all this Nick is driving the car to take them to Jezebel's and remember June and Nick was having like a little relationship a little um you know romantic thing happening so he's just looking at this with so much fury and he's so angry because the commander keeps saying oh doesn't she look beautiful and also june had to wear like mrs waterford's blue hood to make it think to make the soldiers think that she was out with her husband so I, when they're at the bar and jezebel june looks over and she sees mora so now remember she thought mora escaped but also earlier um Janine had told June that Mora died like she got captured when she tried to escape and she was sent to the colonies and the colonies is basically where you just like wipe up radioactive waste or whatever and, you're, and you just work till you die or your skin falls off it's like you're around a lot of contamination so she thought Mora died so when she saw Mora she was in shock and she, after she spent time with the commander she snuck out of the hotel room and went to go find Mora um, Mora and her were talking and at this point, um, we find that Mora has basically just given up with escaping and she's just telling June like, oh, is happening, we're not getting out of this place, I have a good hair, you know, I'm, <laughs> at least they give me food and clothes. And So at this point, June is just looking at her like, um, with so much confusion because Mora was like the real headstrong type. So when they get back from Jezebel, June realizes that, realizes that Nick doesn't want anything to do with her and doesn't even look at her like he's like salty. And she's like, well, you know, I had no choice but to go with him. Like, I don't have a choice here. So Nick just didn't want to hear that. And he just said, you know what? We should just, like, end whatever this is. Wish they should have been did that. And at this point, I was confused because I'm looking at this like June knows her husband is alive. But yet she's still, like, talking with Nick. Nine. The bridge. At this point, of Warren, who is Janine, she has to give up her baby. And she's really struggling with this. And she, because... Warren the head of the ho that household he wasn't supposed to like the the husbands aren't supposed to mingle with the handmaids other than the ceremony so he had a you know outside relationship with Janine and she he like fed all these like thoughts in her head like oh you're gonna we're gonna run away together we're gonna do this we're gonna have a beautiful life together so you know she's kind of crazy she's been traumatized so she's like believing everything he says Meanwhile, after she gives the baby up, she's put into a van and she's basically just shipped off to another house to be another handmaid for this other household. Her new name is of Daniel. Now, um, after this, one of the handmaids who had asked June at the dinner was um, what were the government officials talking about with Mexico. She, she comes to June again and tells her, well, you know, you need to go back to Jezebel since you said you wanted to help with May Day. And June is just like, how do you expect me to do that? And she's like, figure it out. So June goes back home and she kind of like finesses, you know, flirts with the command that makes him feel a little special. And he goes, okay, we can go tonight back to Jezebel's. June is supposed to receive a package there. Uh, but 
Fred knows that something is going on, so he's kind of like, oh, he's still like kind of on the fence about June because he knows like she's not stupid. So um, he figured out that she wanted to meet with Mora. So Mora is there and he invites Mora to the room and just lets them speak because he's like, oh, this is obviously your friend, so you can speak to her. At this point, Mora is still in the headspace about not wanting to escape. Like, she's basically scared. And June is telling her, you need to get your head back in the game because you promised me that I was gonna, that we were going to see my daughter again. And she's like, yeah, you're going to see your daughter. And she's like, no, we were both supposed to see my daughter again. And so when they come back, June, has, June is woken up by Mrs. Waterford. And they basically rush to this bridge because apparently... Janine, she went to the Warren's household and stole her baby and basically ran to this bridge and she's standing on the ledge because she's like she's going to jump off because she thinks like, you know, um, death will be better than the life that she's living. And June, So everybody brought June there to kind of talk her down because June is her friend and um, that's what June does. She ends up trying to go and talk to her, talk her down. But um, June is still trying to convince Janine to live for her daughter and not die. So this leads Janine to hand off her daughter to June and that didn't stop her from jumping off the bridge. She still jumped, but she didn't die. She just landed in a coma. It goes forward to June going to the meat market to get some supplies for home and she ends up, um, the butcher ends up giving her the package that she was supposed to get at Jezebel's and it reads that Mora actually received the package and sent it to her. So now we see that Mora has got her act back together and then it shows Mora killing one of the officials at the hotel room back at Jezebel. She steals his car and then she's able to escape. So Mora already out. She did her thing. She was like, all right, let me get back in the game. So episode 10 night, the last episode. Okay, so this starts out with June first arriving at the training centers. And they do a lot of like, this is like in the past, so they do a lot of flashbacks. And Aunt Lydia is basically telling June to like humble herself and um, they all call in the women sluts and stuff because they're like, oh, they're not pure yet. They're not proper yet. They bring June to like this room where they're basically going to be branded and they take like one of the cattle guns when they like stamp the cattle to make sure they're part of this type of um domain they stamp their ears with like a red piercing to show that they're handmaids and flash for in the in the future i love this quote that like june said she said oh um they shouldn't have never given us uniforms if they didn't want us to be an army okay girl so at this point in the future mrs waterford found out that june went to jezebel with her husband and when june ends up hiding the package behind the tub she comes out of the bathroom and Mrs. Waterford slaps the heck out of her and she hits her head to the wall and she's bleeding. And then Mrs. Waterford makes, like, forces her to take a pregnancy test because she's like, I've had enough with you. I'm ready for you to get out of my house. That's what June does and then we find out that June is now pregnant. And after this, Mrs. Waterford, she goes and confronts Fred and basically tells him to stay away from June. And then she just rips the band-aid and goes, the baby isn't yours either. So... Now he's kind of heartbroken because he's like he thought he had some connection, some imaginary connection with June and now he realizes that he doesn't have a child either. And during this argument that Mrs. Waterford is having with Fred, she basically mentions that um, she doesn't want another handmaiden to, um, to, to be killed in her household because she mentions that there were actually two previous handmaids that they already had. The first one threw herself in front of a truck and the second one hung herself and that's the one who wrote the Latin language in the closet. So we realize that he's just been dibbling and dabbling with everybody. He's really nasty. Then we see June and Nick are downstairs and Nick finds out that she's pregnant and obviously it's his child so he like goes and like gets on his knees and like hugs her stomach. But then Mrs. Waterford walks in, into them in the kitchen like as he's doing that and she basically tells him like you know I don't need you to drive us anywhere. So she takes June into a car and they end up driving to some um, long destination and she covers all the windows so June doesn't know where she is and we find out that Mrs. Waterford knew where June's daughter Hannah was the entire time so she like brings Hannah out and like talking to Hannah while um, June is 
like locked in the car. This is what it first says. I'm just, I'm just ensuring uh, the protection of my child. Like I, d I don't want you to do anything for my child because I wouldn't want anything to happen to your child. So she's basically using that as a threat. Like I know where your daughter is, and I could, something can happen to her if I allow it. That causes June to like go off. And Commander Warren, who was with Janine, he's under persecution because he was. It's, it's against the law to have a romantic relationship with a handmaid. And then we also see like it flashes to some like doctor room, all white, where somebody's getting their hand cut off. And I think that's Janine, but I'm not sure. But um. Oh no no, I think that was Warren that was getting his hand cut off. Yeah, that had to be Warren because, yeah, that had to be Warren. Afterwards, June is trying to knock on Nick's door to like talk to him or whatever and he's not having it so he's not even answering his door anymore. He realizes that June's been lying to him for a long time and um, and basically like, all her cards have been played. So now it flashes to um, June opening the package that was given to her at the meet room. It's nothing but letters from handmaids who are trying to give their testimonies and confessionals and basically tell the world what's really happened to them and for help. Now we see Mora and Mora has basically made it to Canada. She's free. Made it to a safe house at a refugee program. Then we see Fred is going up to Mrs. Waterford and asking her for forgiveness for everything and saying, you know, we're finally going to have a family. We're going to be a real family again. Um, then we hear three bells. So three bells in this society means that a death is going to happen with the handmaids. So the handmaids all have to gather in this one arena. Aunt Lydia is speaking on the microphone talking about, Oh girls, you know, harming a child is the worst crime possible. And the punishment for that is death by stoning. So they bring out Janine and she comes out. So I guess she woke up from a coma and they sent her, her in the middle while all the handmaids are circled around her so um they're basically telling the handmaids to stone janine to death but they're basically like no we're not going to do this the new of glenn she's saying she's not going to do this and gets smacked in the face with a rifle by one of the soldiers and so june picks up one of the stones and she and aunt lydia comes up to her and wants to be like oh see if she's going to do it and june basically drops it and you know if one does something everybody's going to follow because it just takes that one person so all the handmaids just drop it and Aunt Lydia is furious and telling everybody to go home. Going back to Mora, Mora ends up seeing Luke at the refugee camp and she says, well, how did you find me? He says, you know, you were listed as family and Mora thought she didn't have anybody looking for her. So she just like balls in tears and is hugging Luke. And I so now we're back at the Waterford's place and the police have shown up, the militia shown up and um, they're basically taking June. And Nick runs up to her and goes, just go with them, trust me. So I'm kind of thinking like maybe he has something planned. I'm not really too sure. But I thought they were taking her because of the fact that she dropped, she was the first person to drop the stone and she was going to be punished. So they're taking her out the house. Mrs. Waterford is basically like freaking out because like she's finally about to have her, get her child. And now they're taking the one person who's going to be able to give her a child away. Martha also, one of the Marthas also hugged June. And she tells her like some like it's behind the tub so she finds the letters so i guess it's going to be her job to get them out and fred can't do anything about it because fred is like downstairs and he nobody the soldiers are just passing by him like they're not even paying attention to him and then um we see the soldiers put in june in the back of a white van and then it just like closes on that scene and that is the end of season one i know it was a, it was a roller coaster i hope you could catch up with me um, but this show is very intense, it's very good, and I wanted to kind of just like spoil what's happening in the show because this is so much content and so good. And yeah, so make sure to check out Handmaid's Tale Season 2, it arrives April 25th, and I am so excited. I'm glad that I was able to finish this like one day, but I'm probably going to do it with the second season, so make sure to thumbs up and like. Also subscribe if you've liked this video or even like The Handmaid's Tale, make sure to comment below. My social medias are down in the description box, so follow those as well. And have a blessed day, and you know what to do already, so stay royal. Alright, bye!